So in this lesson, we're going to talk about how to write apparent formulas for quadratics. Those are the formulas that take that little subscript, the a sub n, the n in the a sub n, and turn it into each term of the sequence. It's not the recursive ones. It doesn't require previous values. It merely takes the term number and turns it into the value. So this way, this method that I'm about to show you is from Mr. Word, our geometry teacher. And it is based on areas. And the concept is that you have to think of each term as the area of a figure, normally either a square or rectangle, and for the trickier ones, a triangle. Now this method doesn't work for every single quadratic. It's only, uh, it'll only work on the ones that um, can easily be derived from the area of one of those shapes. Um, I learned it a different way when I was in school. I learned, uh, the method I learned is based on some more advanced algebra concepts and some concepts from calculus which you guys haven't taken yet, so I don't expect you to know that, but you do know how to find the area of squares, rectangles, and triangles, and you know how to factor numbers, so that's what this method is based on. And so let's take the most basic of the quadratics, 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36. First, I can verify that these are quadratic, because uh, or that this is quadratic, because if I add 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, I generate these Term. So the first difference is not constant, but there's a pattern in it. And uh, the pattern is that each number I add increases by um, 2, or they're the odd numbers, right? Now, if you recognize these numbers as what they are, uh, what we call them, we call them squares, um, it kind of gives you a clue as to how we're going to use this whole area thing. These are the perfect squares, meaning that if I take the number 1 as the length of a square, its area is going to be 1. If I take the number 2, and I think of 2 as the side length of a square, its area is going to be 4. Side length of a square, 3, has an area of 9. A uh, square with the side length of 4 has an area of 16. And so what I do is I take these numbers, and I think of them as um, areas, right? And so I want to find the length and the width of the f shape of, of the square in this case. Um, and, this, and so for the first one, uh, 1 is a 1 by 1 square. And then 4 is a 2 by 2 square. And 9 is a 3 by 3 square. And four, uh, 16 is a 4 by 4 square. And so like the length is 1, the width is 1. The length is 2, the width is 2. And I look for, instead of a pattern in these numbers, I look for patterns in the factors. And I see if there's a way for me to relate the term number a sub 1, a sub 2, a sub 3, and a sub 4 with the factors. And in this case, it's kind of like standing out, staring out at you. Oh, look, that number squared is that number. That number squared is that number. That number squared is that number. So what is the apparent formula for this most basic of the quadratics? Well, I take the stage number and I square it. Or I multiply it by itself. And that's the apparent formula for this sequence. Now, they're not all based on squares because that'd be kind of lame if they were all just based on the same square. It would just be these numbers shifted around. No fun. So let's look at one that's based not on a square, but on a rectangle. 12, 20, 30, 40, dot, dot, dot. All right. So 12 is the area of some rectangle. 20 is the area of some rectangle, so on and so forth. Now these, what I'm looking for is a pattern in the lengths and the widths. And if I can relate the length and the width back to the stage number, then I'll figure out the apparent formula. All right, so I have to break these down and factor them. So I'm going to take 12, and I'm going to factor it into either 1 times 12, or it can be 2 times 6, or it can be 3 times 4. Only one of these is going to generate the pattern that I'm looking for. And I have to kind of break down the first three terms or so to find the pattern. OK, so number 20, or the number 20, is either 1 times 20, or 2 times 10, or 4 times 5. And then if I look at 30, 30 can either be 1 times 30, or it can be 2 times 15, or it can be um, 3 times 10, or it can be 5 times 6. All right. Now, this does not help me at all, because it's just 1 times the, the term. So that's useless. So I don't care about those. Now, these don't really help me either. Yeah, they're all times 2, but what's up with the pattern 6, 10, and 15? Well, it's plus 4, plus 5. That's another quadratic pattern, so that's not at all helpful. So the only ones I have left are 3 and 4, 
4 and 5, and I want to see if 3 and 10 help. 3 and 10 don't help, but 5 and 6 do. Now I want to know if you see the pattern. These we can think of as the lengths, and these are the widths. So what's the pattern in the lengths? What's well, 3, 4, and 5? What's the pattern in the width? 4, 5, and 6. Now those are very basic sequences, and if you tried to categorize those sequences, it's a linear. So three, four, or it's not linear, I should say arithmetic. Linear is the fancy word for arithmetic. Anyway, so these are arithmetic sequences, three, four, and five, four, five, and six. Now if this pattern holds, then I can take, oopsie, that's not supposed to be 40. Oopsie, oopsie, oopsie. That's supposed to be 42. Now if this pattern holds, sorry about that, um, this next number should be a six, and this next number should be a seven. And well, is six times seven 42? Why, yes it is. So I'm going to rewrite these uh, with a sub ones. So I know a sub one is three times four. I know a sub two is four times five. I know a sub three is five times six. And I know a sub four is six times seven. And notice how I'm consistent. I write the smaller number and then the larger number, okay? because I want to find a pattern in these numbers here first, which I'm going to call the lengths of some rectangle with an area of 20. So if I look at these, I want to relate the stage number to this number. Stage number to that number, stage number to that number. And notice how if I add 2 to this subscript, I'm going to get this number. 1 plus 2 is 3, 2 plus 2 is 4, 3 plus 2 is 5, 4 plus 2 is 6. So this is a plus 2 to the stage number. If I'm looking at a sub n where n is the stage number, I do n plus 2, all right? And then I want to find a pattern with these, which I'm going to call the widths. And so for the widths, I'm going to try to turn a 1 into a 4, a 2 into a 5, and a 3 into a 6. Well, each time what I'm doing is I'm adding 3. So 1 plus 3 is 4, 2 plus 3 is 5, 3 plus 3 is 6, and 4 plus 3 is 7. So I know this is n plus 3. Now I can double check it um, and I can verify that yes this indeed is the apparent formula for this one. Now this is not the only apparent formula. I can multiply all this stuff out and get another one but that's a little bit harder to, to figure out. Um, so I'm gonna do another example. Hopefully I get this number right so um, I don't mess it up. So let's see another example. I'm gonna look at the sequence 5, 12, 21, and 32. And I need to verify that it's quadratic first because if it's, you know, arithmetic or geometric, then, you know, the apparent formula is so much easier. Um, so I add a 7, I add a 9, I add 11, I'm adding odd numbers, so therefore it is quadratic. Now I'm going to do the exact same trick. So I'm going to take a sub 1 and I'm going to factor 5. Well, 5 is prime, so its factored form is quite easy. It's just 1 times 5. Now a sub 2 is 12. That can be a 1 times a 12, but I already know that those 1 times don't help me. Now if I do a 2 times a 6, oh wait a minute, this might work because I see a 1 and then a 2 and then a 5 and a 6. Remember, I'm being consistent. Small number first, large number second. I'm going to think of the first number as length, the second number as width. So if I look at a sub 3, I'm going to say, well, okay, so if this pattern holds, this is going to be a 1, a 2, and that better be a 3, okay? And if this is a 5 and a 6, this thing better be a 7. And is 3 times 7, 21? Why, yes it is. So if this is the correct pattern, or a pattern that's going to work for this, I should be able to follow these numbers. So I get a 1, a 2, a 3, and a 4. A 5, a 6, a 7, and an 8. And is 4 times 8, 32? Yes, it is. So I know what the numbers are. So I'm going to write them on the side and figure out the patterns for each of them. So 1 times 5, 2 times 6, 3 times 7, and then 4 times 8. So I'm going to look at this first column. Now I remember, I need to remember that's a sub 1, that's a sub 2, that's a sub 3, and that's a sub 4. And the whole point of an apparent formula is to match this subscript and turn it into these numbers or find the pattern or relating this subscript to this number. Well, in this case, this first factors, that subscript is the number itself. So I know that my apparent formula is just going to take that stage number, that subscript, 
in, as the first factor. Now I need to find the rule for 5, 6, 7, 8. So how do I turn a 1 into a 5, a 2 into a 6, a 3 into a 7, and a 4 into an 8? Well, these are all 4 higher than these subscripts. So then I, I know that this is going to take the subscript, which is the n in this case, and I'm going to add 4 to it. And so this n times n plus 4, where the n plus 4 is in parentheses, is the sequence that will generate, or is the apparent formula that will generate this sequence.